Hey folks, Dr. Fawaz Albadani from The Wellness Way in Pleasanton. Welcome to the first episode of Leaky Gut Restoration, interviewing top experts around the country and even around the world to talk about leaky gut problems. Today, in a few short minutes, we're going to have Dr. Patrick Flem, an amazing, amazing healer and doctor, uh, and I'll let him introduce himself and tell you a little bit more about himself in a second. Folks, get ready. Um, I see Dr. Patrick Flem is on the show right here. I'm going to invite him live. I'm just waiting for his uh, the show response. Right here. Hey, I'm dog. Welcome, welcome to the show, Dr. Patrick. How are you? No, I need to hear it. Doc. Oh, you can't hear me. I can't hear me. Oh, why don't you have your, you should have your son. Okay. Doc's going well. How are you doing today? Okay. Amazing, amazing. Enjoy oh, beautiful weather in oh, California. Okay, really, can you hear me? Doc's going well. How are you doing today? There's a little bit of an echo. Hey, Brandon, what's up, buddy? <clears throat> Folks, we're going to get started. Like, like you know, this is our first episode. So uh, we're getting this technology right. I think I got you, Doc. Can you hear me now? I can, loud and clear. Welcome, welcome to the show. I am so excited to kick off this, uh, this show interviewing you doc because you are one of my heroes you're i mean what have you done in 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 the health profession is amazing and we'll dive into that so what i want to do is to keep this uh, short and concise to 20 minutes so we get people the most value out of these 20 minutes so we're gonna get started by just asking you to tell us a little bit more about yourself um Besides making the Wellness Way uh, um, with, with great docs, a, a strong national brand, every day, for example, um, I spend most of my time bringing the best clinical care to everybody that we can. Um, we're surrounded by amazing docs. Uh, my whole star story started out with basically, as you can see, my, my sign back there becoming a hormone whisperer. It just started out with uh, the demand for my wife not being able to have children. And, uh, and I just didn't believe, for example, with what all the current healthcare system was telling her and I was a student coming out of school and so I just said okay listen guys I got I, I know there's some form of health care that can actually help this woman this woman that I want to marry this woman that I did marry become pregnant and stuff and, uh, and that's where the wellness way approach birth from and now as you yeah. know like I said we get we get to train and work with docs from all over the country including yourself that deliver just the best top-notch care to get them the best clinical results that are out there today awesome awesome and and, and doc what uh, what you're knowing for is is what i'd like to say is health because mm -hmm. the approach to health out there is just a joke but yep. what you're known for is hormone and yep. you got the nickname the hormone whisperer but our objective for this show is to talk about leaky gut and yep. we'll connect we'll make that connection how leaky gut problems could impact hormones as well but you know there is there are some people who do not even agree with the term leaky gut and claim there is no scientific evidence for leaky gut problems. Uh, how would you define leaky gut, and do you agree with that statement or not? Well, if I agree or not, which I do strongly agree, but if I do or not, <clears throat> the only people that, for example, say that there's no such thing are actually ignorant people, not science. And here's why. If you're just to type in the medical term, which is on PubMed. Now, understand, guys, PubMed is nothing more than the National Institute of Health Medical Library. And if you type in the term intestinal hyperpermeability, guess what happens? It, there's much, much well-documented scientific term that relates to people. That's what the term leaky gut is basically a slang word for intestinal hyperpermeability. Yep. Now, what, what happens is this. So therefore, whenever that, that, that whole GI tract, the intestinal tract from mouth all the way to rectum, is causes any disruptions, any inflammatory things. The one thing that we, Dr. Pao, is you and I, and other docs have done so well, is three major things cause that inflammation to, to create leaky gut. Trauma, toxins, yeah. and thoughts. 
a bacteria can do it, a food allergen, uh, a chemical, a vaccine, a subluxation. All these things, for example, can contribute to the changes because people think the gut's like a tube. No, it's not. It's millions and billions of cells jammed together with little gap junctions. And any trauma toxin or thought is going to start to spread them, which, of course, increases hyperpermeability, which actually means things getting through the gut without being properly digested that way, which by far is the number one cause of hormonal problems. Leaky gut causes hormonal problems. Can you, can you elaborate, <clears throat> excuse me, can you elaborate on that? Because you're knowing the hormone whisper and I, I, I love how you put it simply, uh, like how you, the way you connect the hormones and you explain mm -hmm. it when you, when you came out to Pleasanton and it, like your hormone seminars, you do the hormone seminars all over yes. the country. And I just love the people reaction. And, and the number one thing that I, 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 hear, I heard when you came to Pleasanton, because uh, it was well attended by females yep. who after the seminar said, I wish I brought my husband. But let's yes. go back, uh, back a second. And how does leaky gut problems could cause hormonal distru disruption and problems as well? Yeah, well, a hormonal problem is very simple. Hormones are actually messengers, okay? And so therefore cause our hormones to be thrown off. Mental stress can cause leaky gut, which can in turn cause our hormones to be thrown off. An infection, any inflammation, for example, and the majority of our inflammation comes from our GI, can now mm -hmm. change the hormonal pattern that leads to hormonal diseases, okay? For example, you know, a lot of people say, doc, I have adrenal fatigue, it's my problem. It can't be your problem. Adrenals are a secondary problem. Doc, I have my, my progesterone, my estrogens are off. It must <clears throat> actually mean that, guess what? that I have a hormone balance. No, you don't. You have something throwing the hormones off. There's some trigger to it that way. And the biggest contribution by far is actually our GI problems that way. Now, let me explain yeah. why. Because whenever there's inflammation, our body now has to reduce it, okay? So if we have just a food allergy, and doc, you test yeah. those constantly. If you we eat do. gluten, okay, and it causes inflammation, how the body responds properly and normally is it produces cortisol. Cortisone comes from progesterone. So consistent yep. disruptions to that gut will drain your hormones. And your hormones are like a fuel tank. Produce a rate of time that way. And especially if you lack some ingredients, it's very hard to produce hormones. So the gut stress now caused a hormone depletion, which led to that whole cascade of hormonal imbalances that way. So it's kind of like going from stage one to four. You got to remember one, two, and three, for example, can stem it from the gut that can now lead to those massive hormonal problems. That's why women, yep. it's so important. If you have leaky gut, it's impossible to have normal hormones. Absolutely impossible. You cannot have it. And even it relates to guys, it's just that most women's hormones are more thrown off than actually guys' hormones are because we are less affected compared to women are. Yep, amazing. And, and, and there, is, there is this conventional way for testing, but yeah. what, what kind of testing do you recommend to find out if you have leaky gut problems or not? Well, you gotta remember, Instead of, you can always do a, a test to see if you have leaky gut. You can test a protein called zonulin that way. I always tell people it's a great test. But then, for example, here I tell people, if you experience even just symptoms, we don't base anything on symptoms. But if you just yeah. base anything on symptoms, you can tell if a person has leaky gut, not just by even a questionnaire, okay? But yeah. then you can now start testing the things that actually trigger leaky gut. By far, the number one thing you have to have tested is your food allergies. Now, let me elaborate on that. Because they say, Doc, I went to my allergist and I actually tested my food allergies. Yes, you tested the anaphylactic IgE like I have for an egg, okay? And therefore, yeah. guess what? You can die from them. They're very disrupted. Last thing you have to worry about is leaky gut if you have an IgE. But then there's other triggers within our immune system. If you look like Crohn's or celiac, which is a major disease, but you measure the IgE, that's what the wellness way is done so much is find those little triggers that can now lead to inflammatory changes within the gut that can open those junctions and cause it, okay? That's yeah. number one, by far. I think the, the other second test that actually probably the but does the best is a full stool analysis, okay? Because it will tell you the microbes that have become overgrown. And sometimes from a food allergy, you can throw the, the microbiome off and even normal flora. That's why you hear so much about candida today. You know, people yeah. say, doc, I got to kill off my candida. I said, well, if you kill off all your candida, guess what's going to happen? You can't digest food. And that kind of throws them off a little bit. Well, it throws them off because candida is a normal flora, but overgrowth, guess what happens? It's an infection. Okay. Yeah. And so any disruption. 
Now, I'll have I'll say this though. I will still say that the most devastating in the state that you actually live in probably created the worst law in history for 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 leaky gut is when they passed the mandatory vaccine law. Vaccines yeah. are one of the major causes of leaky gut. Do you see what I'm saying? Because you know yeah. these kids can be breastfed, but they had a vaccine. Those toxic ingredients are going to cause major gut GI problems that way. You follow me? Okay. So it's yeah. really disrupting that way. Just being the vaccine themselves, what can cause leaky gut. Now, I, I just wanted to like mention a few things that could lead to or cause leaky gut problems. We talk, we talk about vaccine. You talk about yep. uh, gut flora. Uh, yep. Is there anything else that could lead or cause leaky gut problems? Mental stress, foods, yeah. medications. Okay. Guys, got to look at it this way. Some of your major medications, let's give an example, Prilosec. Do you understand that most of our protein pump inhibitors cause leaky gut? Okay. Now think about that. The top medication given for actually for last patent drug, some cholesteroloin drug. But do you understand the top three of the five top selling drugs in the world, especially in the United States, are actually protein pump inhibitors, acid blocking drugs. Well, if you look at some yep. of the major side effects are infections in the GI because that stomach acid does protect your body against leaky gut. All right. So that's why it's very yep. important that when you actually watch a medication you need i'm not saying a person doesn't need a medication but on the process of medication it can actually cause leaky gut syndrome that way absolutely absolutely now it, it, leaky gut is that something uh, that you just have to manage and live with or is it fixable and treatable well you gotta remember every part of the body wants to repair back to a normalcy that way and if you look at the amount yeah. of regeneration the gut has example is it's the hardest thing to fix but it can be fixed let me explain why Okay. The reason why it's so hard is because foods are so emotional. You saying? Because let's say you do have 35 foods you're allergic to. Let's say you have 10 you're allergic to. And let's say it's chicken. Let's say it's a, a fruit. Let's say it's, you know, some of like that. It's so difficult because number one reason why is you have to be very careful about putting, introducing anything in that can disrupt that. And you need a significant amount of time to really repair it that way. So I tell people they're always have to manage their gut because most people will break down the most to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, uh, I know you, you've mentioned about leaky gut problems and healing the, the gut itself. Mm -hmm. it, it could take up to three months to replace the gut lining. Mm -hmm. And one and of that's the things a is, that's a minimum. It could be mm -hmm. a, a lot more. Like when I, test, when I tested myself, uh, mm -hmm. I, I was surprised to be allergic or sensitive to foods like broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Now, yep. in the conventional method, if you are allergic to certain foods and your doctor or your nutritionist told you that uh, to be able to lose weight, you need to go eat healthy and you eat stuff that are, you're allergic to, uh, is, can you lose weight that way? It's impossible. Okay. For example, let me give you an example. I have a, a very bad, severe egg allergy to the fact that mm -hmm. where for people just generalize and say eggs are good for you. Now, Durham, I'm a big component is because my background is nutrition. I think eggs, if you look at an egg and look at all the ingredients, is one of the healthiest foods on the planet. But for me, it'd kill me. Yep. For me, it's poisonous that way. So that's why when people come to me and say, Doc, I have a healthy diet. My first question is, goes back to our model. We don't guess, we test. So have you been tested? Yep. No, then you don't know what your, a healthy diet is. You can, you can look at a constituent and say, look, at, a Snickers bar is bad and broccoli is good, but you know just as well as I do. A broccoli can be just as bad as a Snickers bar for you. Oh, there we go. Let's do this. I'm, we're going to go mobile. Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. Awesome. So, I mean, what what would you recommend? I know, like with with the way that you approach health, it's it's unbelievably awesome and amazing. And with the Wellness Way offices across the country, inflammation and food allergies is is very crucial. And I know, like we do in Pleasanton, we have the inflammation workshop twice a month, and all the offices across the country. Yes. To like what, 30 offices across the country right now? No, I think we're over 50 now. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I know we're, we're over, like over 50 doctors, but some offices have multiple doctors, but that's, that's amazing. So over 50 offices for people to get information about these inflammation workshops and how to mm -hmm. attend them, what do they need to do? 
Well, best thing you do is actually go to our website, uh, www.twwclinics.com. If you just even Google search The Wellness Way, you're going to see all the clinics pop up across the country because then we all have the ability to actually see a doctor within our area. Like, for example, Doc, you know, you've noticed that that when I do a YouTube video, that doctors will search out and go, hey, you, we have somebody in California area that way. And yeah. so all the doctors are highly trained, you know, uh, on what we do. The Wellness Way approach is unique. And so that's why people say, well, I'm going to ask my doctor to do this. Well, good luck, because he doesn't know what he's doing. If he did, you wouldn't even be researching our things. So our cool. uniqueness actually allows us to actually see things differently, and that's one of our biggest keys. Now, beside testing properly for the problem and yep. getting to a Wellness Way office, what would you recommend? What kind of resources would you recommend for people at this, at this time? Well, what I would do is this. I would actually start to understand how our body works, okay? Yep. Because it's hard to know what to do without actually knowing how the body works. Because otherwise you just get into this. You're gonna jump on the, the internet and you're gonna say leaky gut. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna have 30 doctors on there tell you what the magic product is to actually heal the guts. Correct. The is, it could be based on the broccoli. It could be an extract from broccoli, it could be an extract from, from collagen, it could be an extract from there. The sad part is you could react to it that way and you're actually making your gut worse. So just understand, no joke, the one thing that makes our doctors so valuable is they understand biochemistry and anatomy so well that now when they test it, now they know what that individual needs that way. So it just understand how your body works. It's really, it really fascinates me with hormones that women don't even understand that there's multiple estrogens. You would say, yeah. you heard me say that. I'll, I'll ask women, raise your hand if you've heard the hormone estrogen. Everybody does. I said, that's why you're sick. You're sick exactly. because there's no such thing as estrogen. Estrogen is a term for multiple estrogens and they have different names and women are looking at me clueless and cross-eyed. And I said, that's why you're sick. So you have to understand your body and how it works first. That's a big key. Yeah, and I, I, love, I love your philosophy when you say the body does not make mistakes. So nope. if you have high cholesterol, if you have cancer, if you're suffering with anything, it's the body is doing what it's supposed to do. So yep. can you elaborate on that when you say the body does not make mistakes? Well, here, medicine actually, actually, this is why they fail so much. Because they think we're like a machine that just breaks down. Well, guess what? Okay. You have a cell phone. You're saying, for example, I was getting disconnected a little bit in my office because there was a disconnect between the connection that way. But then what I do, but that's just a breakdown of the machine. Our body has the ability to, to adapt and figure out how to repair. So therefore, if I step on a nail and my blood pressure jumps up, it's doing that to help, help my body get away from that stress. Well, you don't Correct. just knock the blood pressure down. It's doing that because it doesn't make mistakes. It's saying, I got to survive that stressor. And without having the right choice, and your body has to make second it, it has makes changes so quickly think about this if you touch a hot plate your body knows what it's doing all those changes right. happen for because why to protect yourself to survive correct correct and and, and I've, I've been following your your uh tuesday shows the yep. uh, the dr patrick flynn show at yep. it's at 12 o'clock central time that's your and time what you talked about today about cancer and how the body reacts and so forth and it's, it's not about a condition. It's not about a diagnosis. It's about a mindset, yep. a change in the paradigm and the way we think about health. That's why yep. I don't view you just the hormone expert. I, I, I look at you as the health expert because you approach health differently because the way we approach health traditionally is killing us. And yep. it's one of the leading causes of death in the United States. So we have to think about differently. And what's, what's interesting to me is that when people say, hey, I need to check with my doctor, like you say all the time, if your doctor was smart enough, you would not be in this position. You would not uh -huh. be with type 2 diabetes, with cardiovascular diseases, with cancer, and so forth. So checking with your doctor may not be the best thing. So uh, again, I just wanted to elaborate on that. The Dr. Patrick Flynn Show, it's every yeah, Tuesday, 12 o'clock Central Time, right? Yes. Yep. And it's, it's, and it's live on Facebook. We have that playing in our office every Tuesday for people to watch any, any last advice for people watching right now? Yes. Just remember, I always go back to our model because you can never go wrong. And guess what? The nice thing about when you actually do testing, you know, remember we don't guess we test. The nice right. thing about that model is this, no matter what happens, no matter what you choose, you can still see where your body is at and you don't even need a doc to do it. Just get somebody to test you properly. Get somebody to look at you different that way. And now, you don't need to be convinced by every doctor. Look at your lab. The great thing about the internet today, you can find so much good information, but not from what, how to take care of stuff, but how, if you, if you have a hormone that's off, 
you can learn enough about what to do with it. You're going to find out there's very few doctors that know what to do with it. I hate to say it, right. I, unless it's a wellness way doc, I, I will say it's with great confidence. There is not one doctor I know out there that can deal with hormones besides a wellness way doc. Why? Because they, they think about it so differently when you do. And it's the reason why my hormone connection seminar, which we start back in the fall, is such a demand because we get people to look at so differently. And that's why we have medical doctors, nurses, everything look come to our seminar and they're like, I wish medicine would think this way. They never will because they'd have to think and get rid of so much stuff they do in order to do it. So Yeah, I, and that's what I love about the wellness way. I mean, you know, you, you're a chiropractor, you have a yep. nutrition degree and so forth. I'm a chiropractor myself, but among the car, I mean, the, the wellness way, there are medical doctors and nurse practitioners yep. who are thinking differently and, and, and agreeing with everything we're saying and we're doing with the wellness way. And that's the one yep. thing I love about this as well. It, it, it's like starting to change the paradigm and the way we view health from the inside out. You got her. You got her. All right, Doc, like I promised our viewers, this is going to be just a 20 minutes of solid information. And I'm glad you mentioned the hormone seminars. And we're going to have you back here in California sometime yep. soon. So we'll stay tuned for that. And like I said, a lot of a lot of the ladies who were there at the seminar, the one thing they were saying, I wish I brought my husband. Because mm -hmm. when it comes to guys, they don't, they don't know or they don't understand that hormones and hormonal problems could apply to them. If, you're, if your hormones are off, you could have cancer, you could develop other health diseases and so forth. That's why it's really crucial for guys to have a better understanding of what hormones for their own health and then for for their marriage and for their, their marriage. others. Exactly. That's a big, big thing. Mm -hmm. Doc, I appreciate you. And thank you for taking this time to, to share with us your wisdom. And I appreciate thank your time as well. Keep up the good work, Doc. I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.